Awesome. How's it going? Cool. Uh, it's been great. Uh, this conference, we met a lot of uh, high quality people, developers, founders, mm -hmm. a lot of partnership built. So I'm very happy about the, the result. Excellent. Yeah, it's been a long three days, hasn't it? Yeah. A lot of it's talks been. and speakers and, and panels and um, at least for me from the interviewing side, been a mm -hmm. lot of people to talk to, but it's, it's been great. For everybody, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the people, I see the uh, main uh, speaking hall mm -hmm. is very full, so people have been paying attention to the talks. That's good, that's good. Well, Chris, welcome to uh, the podcast. Thank uh, you for so having me. Really happy that we were able to make some time for you to come on. Um, Want to learn about ADA, ABA protocol today and what you guys are doing. Um, to kick it off, usually I ask everyone to tell us a little bit about themselves and their background. Cool. Yeah. I'm sure watchers and listeners will be very curious to who Chris is, um, maybe your story, how you got into the Web3 industry. Um, I know for a lot of people that sometimes is very unique and interesting. Um, so who who is Chris? What's your story? And how did you find yourself in this space? Cool. Uh, I was a Microsoft software engineer uh, working oh, wow. on messaging protocol before getting into this space. Uh, never liked the big corporate life. I spent four and a half years there, uh, led a team of 11 mm -hmm. before I left. Um, but uh, in 2017, I really wanted to start entrepreneurship and blockchain was hot, uh, starting to take off in the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. So I went to local meetups at Stanford University, the Bay Area, San Francisco, and all the people I met were from blockchain. So I started to uh, research, uh, okay, what is a blockchain, mm -hmm. right, the, the term. And what really drew me into uh, the, the blockchain world is the white paper of Augur mm -hmm. and the white paper of Ethereum. I check out those, those papers, I'm like, this is the future. I got to be part of it. Yeah. So yeah, jump ship, left, uh, quit my day job, and jump into uh, blockchain in 2017. I started uh, uh, from building Solidity smart contracts on Ethereum. At the time, the infrastructure was very uh, primitive. Uh, we actually built the first generation. We were, we were a part of the first generation of a prediction market. Mm -hmm. So build a solid smart contract around that. And then I kind of drifted away to other block one, like uh, layer one blockchains, mm -hmm. build uh, uh, gaming dApps, wallets, uh, all sorts of stuff, a gas station smart contract. Mm -hmm. um, so build all sorts of stuff, but from 21, we had this idea, okay, the, it's really the uh, immaturity of the infrastructure, infrastructure that blocks the mass adoption. Mm -hmm. So we, we saw, uh, so our idea originally came from Keeper Network. Okay. Uh, we saw the idea of a Keeper, we were like, oh, this is convenient, allowing regular Web3 users to schedule and automate functions. Uh, right now, uh, on Ethereum at the, at the time, right now we can do cross chains. Um, so we started the journey of building this uh, smart contract automation. Mm -hmm. So basically the one liner is that we're bu building a private autonomous super transactions on Ethereum. And that, that's basically revolutionizing smart contract automation. Okay, cool. So you guys with Ava, you guys are in the business of automating smart contracts. What, what does that look like exactly? Can you give some examples? Uh, yeah, for, for example, we're enhancing dApps Okay. with scheduled payments. Oh, wow. Let's say you're building a uh, decentralized OnlyFans and you need uh -huh. uh, member subscription services. So we're there to help you. And stop loss trading orders. Mm -hmm. Like we can allow users to schedule TWAP or daily cost averaging buy on uh, any DEX. So basically the Web3 user don't need to wait the DEX to implement those features anymore. Mm -hmm. We can help them. Um, another use case would be streaming NFT rewards. Yeah, for NFT users. And we have a use case for RWE as well, but mm -hmm. that's uh, more on the payment side, like streaming payments. Okay. And do you have any existing partnerships currently? Or like, are you working with any particular OnlyFans individuals or, or some gaming companies? Or I'm sure there's a lot of potential, um, you know, use cases that can crop up, but like curious, like if you have any partnership solidify. Yeah, right now we are working with developers directly because okay. this, this developer-centric solution Works for all types of all types of Web three applications, but it's built by developers for mm -hmm. developers. Okay. Um, uh, we work with seven developer applications right now, 
um, building for the, uh, for example, we work with the term finance, which is a long fixed rate interest loan platform on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. We help them streamline their DevOps. Okay. Yeah, and we build with this company, RWA company called Zoth, to help them stream the, stream the payments from their users. Okay, interesting. Um, so then what are you doing at Permissionless? Is it more or less the same thing? You guys are looking for more of those types of connections to network with and partner with, or is there another purpose for being here? We hosted a hackathon. Oh, Permissionless. Okay. Yeah, we submitted two challenges. One is product, product design, the other is coding. Okay. Uh, help helping us uh, building the SDK. And uh, we have received a great, like, very high quality submission for those nice. challenges. So, so I assume it went well. When was the hackathon? Tuesday, uh, the day before uh, the conference start. OK, very nice. Uh, how many people participated, do you know? We got 18 submissions very nice. in the two tracks. Very nice. Uh, some of them are very high quality, understand the DeFi market very well. Mm -hmm. So one of them is DeFi, the other is user interface tools. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, that, that aligns with our vision that we're, we're building this drag and drop mm -hmm. uh, Lego building block interface for users. For example, if you, want to, you have a trading strategy in mind, you want to test it out, we give you a few building blocks, so you can chain them together. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it says, okay, uh, triggers by time or price or a smart contract calls. And uh, then you can do some condition. Like for example, the Ethereum price went below 2,000 USDC, and I can buy mm -hmm. on any DEX because we can connect to any DEX on Ethereum. OK. And then these submissions from developers, do you know if they were US-based developers or foreign developers, like just kind of demographically? Uh, the winners are, the two winners are US-based, but not, not all of them. We got people from all over the world. OK. And you're based in San Francisco, right? San Francisco. Okay, so you're not too far away, actually, from Salt Lake City. Um, yeah. The reason I ask is I'm just curious because the U.S. has become a very interesting place for Web3 over the last few years with mm -hmm. the crackdown regulations and I think not having quite the supportive atmosphere it did before and a lot of better jurisdictions popping up around the world. Um, you know, is that impacting your ability to find, like, really good developers to come work with you guys at Ava Protocol or getting people to contribute to the ecosystem? Do you see a lot of that being done outside the US? Just mm. kind of curious from like your perspective what the overall work landscape kind of looks like um, from contributors, people internally, maybe externally, um, and maybe what that represents in regards to the US. I agree. If we are comparing that like today to 2021, the top mm -hmm. of the bull market. Sure. It is uh, much harder to find talent in the U.S. Um, mostly because, like, Web three is not really, you know, if you we, we look at those Google search engine keywords, uh, Web three is not hasn't gone back to the top yet. So I guess the people who are looking for a job uh, is is the, the the keyword is not popping up for them mm -hmm. on search engine. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is that. Uh, we do have a lot of barrier. For example, to develop a solid smart contract, mm -hmm. it's better just um, recruit the college graduates or graduate school graduates than finding some Rust. Well, Rust is a, finding some JavaScript developer on mm -hmm. the market. Um, however, we're trying to change that because um, what we really do is very similar to Icon DA, which migrate on-chain storage to off-chain uh, because it's faster and cheaper. Mm -hmm. And we see that people start to accept the idea that, oh, as long as you have, well, we're one of the Eigenlayer EBS. Eigenlayer has the uh, restrict uh, the ETH backing mm -hmm. from the holders, right? As long as you are backed by security, uh, you know, as long as your code is open source, we trust you that your you code can be run by the network, decentralized network. So it, not every step need to be on chain anymore. So we migrate the computation from the Ethereum main layer one to our off-chain component, which is the AVS as well. Mm -hmm. So that will help adopt a regular developer, like a developer with the traditional programming language, JavaScript, Python, Go, Rust. Okay. They can program like in our component with the language they're familiar with, and we commit the result. We verify and commit the result back to Ethereum. Okay. Ava, is it built on Ethereum? 
Yeah, we're right now we're just serving Ethereum. But okay. the goal is to serve uh, any EVM L2s as well. Okay, do you have any plans to expand beyond the Ethereum ecosystem at some point? Yeah, we're doing something on base right now. Okay. Uh, so base will be the next one. What do you think of base? I don't hear a lot about it, but you know, I don't hear anything bad about it either. Um, I think because the synergy with the Coinbase, mm -hmm. because I use Coinbase wallet, a lot of, you know, they have this traffic redirection. Uh, for example, if you're transferring asset receive, send a receive, base become a natural selection for that. Um, so I start to use it more and more often. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the community is active. The Hackathon grant, the Hackathon project is actually built for a uh, DeFi project on base. Okay. Do you think it's going to grow and get more popular or do you think it serves like a very specific niche, you think? No hot takes on the no popularity of the L twos because they are great. I mean, so many of them are great. We're also doing something with the Sony chain as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the new layer two. We just don't want to lose the opportunity. To, What's the Sony chain? Uh, Sony layer two, uh, the Sony company, the Japanese. Oh, their chain. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I have heard about some of that. Uh, the the public announced uh, to about one and a half months ago, and okay. we are part of their Spark incubation program. Okay. Providing our uh, automation smart contract, smart contract automation tool to their developers with a discount, you know, to incentivize to them to come to use it. We just don't want to lose the opportunity to sure. adopt these users on these new L2s, uh, because to us, the most important thing is that people, uh, you know, use the faster and cheaper tool to build their business logic. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we want to get feedback from the developers. Yeah, I've heard about the Sony chain, and I know that there's a huge emphasis on entertainment and gaming type of use cases, obviously, because it is Sony. Um, that probably fits in really well with your guys' scope to being somewhat affiliated. Yeah, because it's faster. The, and uh, we can help them launch faster. That's, the, mm -hmm. uh, that's our hook. Uh, and reduce the dev cost by 70%. Yeah. So on one side, because uh, our EigenLayer EBS network provides so much computational and uh, computational power and storage, and that is not heavily utilized yet. Mm -hmm. And on the other side is that we have this drag and drop tool uh, reduce the uh, dependency on the DevOps skill set, because the PM can actually build a DevOps Dev operation himself mm -hmm. without the help of DevOps. Well, what does your guys' roadmap kind of look like, you know, finishing up the rest of this year in Q4 and heading into 2025? Is there anything that you can divulge or share with um, people out there in the ecosystem or people looking at Ava, maybe wanting to build on Ava that might be enticing for them to get involved? Yeah, uh, from my description, you probably can't see that. Okay, for example, TWAP order on DEX. Mm -hmm. It can be a plugin feature on the DEX user interface. So as opposed to just make a market order or limit order, you can have a more versatile mm -hmm. functionality to place your order. For example, you know, buy ETH $100 time once a week. Right? That's the daily cost averaging. Um, we are actually getting grants from the top uh, DeFi projects, mm -hmm. building things for them. Our goal is to, in the near future, let's say three months later, to plug those user features into their website. So okay. right now, if you want to use that feature, you can come to our website. But the best user experience is that, okay, you go to this DEX, and you can have all the uh, comprehensive functionalities mm -hmm. on the side for you to pick and choose. That was very fascinating. Um, where can people go to learn more? Website, social media, community? Yeah, I follow would... us on Twitter. Okay. Uh, it's Ava underscore protocol. Not Ava protocol, like one word. Uh, yeah, Ava underscore protocol. And our website. Our website, we have a very comprehensive documentations. And our blogs. Our blogs, we, we write a lot of us, a lot of stuff about the ecosystem. For example, mm -hmm. Eigenlayer EVS. If you search for Eigenlayer EVS, our blog is ranked at a very high uh, in Google search engine. And it's on we, the website? Uh, yeah, it's on our okay. website. The blog is on our web website. And uh, we wrote about a smart wallet. We wrote about the privacy plan that, that, we, uh, is, that is on our roadmap in the next six months. So privacy is a hard problem to solve. Um, 
by privacy, I mean that uh, the user's intent goes into the hardware enclave directly. Mm -hmm. So even software like Earth, we can't even see that. Awesome, man. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. And um, enjoy the rest of your uh, final day here at Permissionless. And let's uh, follow up in the near future. We have some more updates for maybe part two. Cool. Thank you, Brandon. Likewise. Thank you for having me.